Hi, we're back with week two of the Growing Local Food Parcels and this week we're making a korma curry with chicken and butternut squash. So the recipe card is in your box as is all of the ingredients and it also then tells you what equipment you need which hopefully I've got everything out ready for you. Alongside the korma recipe this week, they've also given you some oats and a nice fact sheet about oats and some ideas to use the oats up. So have a little look at that too. So to start with the korma, what we're going to do is prepare all of the vegetables. So what I've got is an onion, which we did last week. A pepper also did last week. And then we've got the butternut squash and we've got ginger and garlic. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get a bowl for my rubbish, forgot that, and then I'm going to chop the onion, so if you remember we take the top off, not the root, and then turn it upside down, chop it in half straight through the middle of the root, and then peel back the skin and the first layer. membrane off there that helps to stop the knife from slipping it's quite slippery so now we're just going to slice this one um, into chunks so again you can use a fork if you want to just stick it in the end and then we're just slicing the onion from the other end back towards the fork and this keeps our fingers out of the way completely ready to go. So then the pepper. Last week I showed you that if you push straight through the middle then you can tip the seeds out. This week I'm going to show you a different method which is to just chop the pepper in half and then scoop out the seeds. Both of those methods leave things pretty tidy. Um, and then we're just going to chop the pepper into chunks. So we're going to hold it from the edge and slice through all the way. And then take each piece and just cut them again into half. You can do this how you like it really, depending if you want it nice and chunky or a bit smaller. Again with the other half. I did mention as well that you can use scissors to chop peppers, so if you wanted to, you could just chop them up with a pair of scissors once you've reached that stage. Excellent. Okay, so that's the easy bit done now. Now we have this big, thick, heavy butternut squash to deal with, and the recipe calls for us to use half of the butternut squash and to peel it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into half first and just peel the half that I need. And I was using this knife to cut the onion and the peppers. And because this is much bigger, I'm going to use a, a larger knife to get through the butternut squash. So I'm going to hold it at its biggest end and I'm going to chop down onto the chopping board. There we go. And then this piece, you can either peel that later um, and chop it as we're going to do with the top half. It's got some seeds in, so we would scoop those out. And what I would quite like to do is literally not bother to peel it, cover it in a little bit of oil, and then scoop the middle out and roast it in the oven like you would a jacket potato. And then you can actually eat the skin as well. It's really delicious. So I'll put that to one side and make sure that we use that another time. I'm going to take the end off, the top end off. And then we're going to peel this. And it is quite a tough skin, but you can do it with a potato peeler. Okay, so just peeling. We 
really, to be safe, should peel away from ourselves. So I've peeled this. I didn't make you watch me do the whole thing. Um, and it is quite difficult, to be honest. So what I would suggest, if your potato peeler is perhaps not as sharp as it could be, is that we're going to chop this up after it's been peeled. So if you were struggling, what you could have done is to chop it into small pieces and then obviously imagining the skins there, you could just go around it carefully with a knife and chop the skin off if you wanted to, but I wouldn't suggest trying to use a knife on the whole butternut squash. So as I say, once you've peeled it, we're just gonna chop it into chunks. I'm gonna go with about that size, so I think it's roughly similar sizes. And the rest of it. I'm not going to do it on its curve because it's safer to do it flat, so I'm going to chop down that way. Okay. It's lovely and orange. You might find that it turns your hands slightly orange from handling it. really a lovely sweet taste to a butternut squash and like I say if you roast the remaining part it's absolutely delicious. I particularly like it with a little bit of chilli flakes over it. Okay one butternut squash chopped Okay, so all of the vegetables have been prepared now, so we are ready to start the cooking process and we're going to put a tablespoon of oil into the pan and start cooking the onions. I have been given some oil in my box of ingredients this week, but this is left over from last week, so as it's open I'm going to use this one. One tablespoon of oil into the pan. A good glug if you don't want to measure it, that's not a problem. And then to start with, we're just going to cook the onions. So I will take these over and carefully lower them in. And just give them a bit, break them up slightly so they're not all stuck together. Now, we want to leave those to cook gently so that they're not burning um, until they go a bit opaque and translucent, so probably about 10 minutes. While that's happening, we're just going to make up the stock. So I've got one stock cube here from the pack. So this is a chicken stock cube, a vegetable stock cube would be also equally good. Um, the kettle has been boiled and we're going to put about 400 grams of... Um, water in on top of this stock cube. If you don't have a measuring jug, it's roughly one and a half cupfuls of hot water, boiling water, to go onto the stock cube. And we're also going to just measure out the ground almonds. It's 75 grams of ground almonds, but um, about 70 tablespoons is also about the same amount. So let's do that while the pepper's boiling. I think that's six. I can't remember. I was counting in my head, so I like them anyway. So we'll go with that being seven. If it's a little bit too much, it's not going to ruin anything. And then we will bring our kettle over and just pour the water over the stock cube. Okay, and then that will dissolve while the onions are cooking, and then we'll be ready to add in some of the other ingredients. So the onions are cooking away nicely and now I haven't chopped the chicken so I'm going to do that now. I would normally use a separate chopping board for chicken, I've got a glass one that I use for raw meat so that they never get mixed up, but if you need to use the same chopping board just make sure that you clean it really well afterwards. But what I'm going to do rather than chop it onto a chopping board, I'm literally going to Use a pair of scissors. This is a chicken thigh, which I'm going to cut into half and then into a couple of more pieces. 
So they're about that size chunks. And I don't have to worry about the chopping board. If you don't like the feel of it in your hands though, not everybody likes to feel the raw chicken in their hands, then obviously popping it on a chopping board and you can just chop it then with a knife and fork so you don't have to touch it at all. Obviously if you've touched it, like I have, we need to wash our hands thoroughly and the um, scissors and the bowl. So I'm going to tip this chicken in. This hand hasn't touched anything, so I'm going to pop the butternut squash in there as well. And then that's going to just start to brown off while I take all of this that has got meat juices and raw meat has touched it over and thoroughly washed my hands. So you can see the meat starting to change colour. It's going from pink to white. We don't need to worry about it being cooked all the way through just yet because this is going to simmer away for 25 minutes um, once we've got all of the rest of the ingredients in. So that's been cooking for about five minutes. What we're going to do now is add in the peppers. It doesn't matter what colour the peppers are. The ginger and the garlic is going in now. And we're also going to add the spice mix that we've been given. So this is a, a mixture of cumin, coriander, garam masala, turmeric and ground pepper. If you wanted to make this again in the future, you can just buy curry mixes, curry powders, and that would be fine. Gosh, I can't the lid off, that's not good. So tip all of that in. It smells lovely. And then we were provided with some chilli powder as well. So I do like hot curry, so I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of this mild chilli powder in. That is obviously optional. You can make it as spicy or not, as you like. And we're just going to mix this all together. And these spices need to cook through just for a couple of minutes but we don't want them to burn on the pan. So we just keep on stirring and then we're gonna add the liquid to allow it to cook down and simmer away so that the butternut squash gets softened and the chicken is cooked all the way through. It should be starting to make the kitchen smell lovely by now, but don't leave it or it will catch on the bottom of the pan. Okay, so the stock has dissolved. Um, mine's in a measuring jug, just be careful because the jug is obviously still very hot. Pour that in. Add the almonds. I checked, it actually said eight tablespoons on the recipe, so apologies, there's an extra one in there now. Give that a good mix through. and then we want to leave it on a medium heat so I'm just going to turn it down slightly pop the lid on it and just going to leave that to cook for about 25 minutes but what you want to do it will depend on how big your um, butternut squash chunks are is to just check that the meat's cooked all the way through and the butternut squash is nice and soft um, before you move on to the next stage which is really just adding in our peas and our double cream Here we have our curry at its final stages. You can see that the butternut squash now breaks apart nice and easily. That has taken almost an hour at a low simmer for that to happen. Um, and that's probably because I chopped the butternut squash quite thick. So just bear in mind, it says 25 minutes on the recipe, but it will depend. So the chicken is fine cooking you know, for hours. It's absolutely fine. So if you need to cook it for longer for the butternut squash to get soft, then that feel no that's fine to do 
So now we're just going to add the final bits, which is 150 grams of peas. You don't have to be precise about this, but I have weighed them into a cup so you can see roughly how much that is. It's about three quarters of a mug full. Or just throw it in however many peas you like. It'll just mean that it'll have more peas. It doesn't matter. Um, and stir those through. They'll just take a couple of minutes to cook. And then we've got 100 ml of double cream. So I've been given this quite small pot, which is 150 ml. Again, you can measure it or you can just guess. Just pour that in over. I've poured it all in because I like cream. Um, and again, it doesn't matter, it's fine, rather than it go to waste. And finally, I've chopped the lemon in half. And we're just going to squeeze the juice of the lemon into the curry. Um, I don't have a juicer and rather than squeeze it directly and I'm just going to squeeze it back into this cup in case any pips come because if you squeeze it through your hands like they do on the TV it stings if you've got any little cuts. So the idea was to take those out. So squeeze the lemon. If you need to get some extra juice out of here if you pop a fork in and just twist it round, that's as good as any juicer that you can buy. And you probably do have a fork at home. Fish out the pips. If you've got a juicer, that's a whole lot easier, but not everyone has one. Pop the lemon juice in. I haven't put it all in, I'm just going to give it a quick stir through. Whoa. Taste it. Yeah, I'm going to add the rest. Okay, so you can add as much or as little lemon juice as you want to just to taste it. And then just let that warm through completely couple of extra minutes when the peas are hot and it's all ready to go. So you can serve that with rice, that's what normally you would serve um, curries with traditionally or just eat it on its own or on the Wish Cooking at Home website we've got a lovely flatbread recipe you could try but um, I hope you enjoy that corner.